Okay, we're continuing to look at our application of this macroscopic momentum balance uh, on a system that would be relevant for pipe flow. So we have this disk of fluid uh, of width dx uh, and cross-sectional area of a sub x. a sub w represents this wetted uh, contact area with the wall of the pipe. And then we have vx and pressure p, velocity vx and pressure p uh, entering the control volume and velocity vx plus dvx and p plus dp pressure uh, at the exit of the control volume. And so now we're looking at the sum of the forces uh, on this control volume. So we found one already, which was the, the, net, the net pressure force acting on this, uh, on this uh, control volume. So now we're going to look at another force, uh, gravity. And so the net gravity force is equal to uh, rho gx times the volume. So gx is the x component of the uh, gravity, uh, gravi gravitational acceleration uh, vector g. Uh, so remember that uh, you know we're looking at the x component of these these forces, and then ax dx represents the volume because remember gravity is a body force, uh, so it acts on the volume. So the cross-sectional area times this width is give basically the volume of this uh, of this disc-shaped uh, control uh, control volume. Okay, so now let's uh, try to get an expression for this x component of the gravitational acceleration. So remember if we draw our gravity vector pointing downward, subject to this coordinate system uh, where x is along the axis of the pipe and z is orthogonal to that, so we can express um, the x and z components, of the gravitational acceleration, uh, as follows here, as shown here. And uh, let's call the angle uh, here at the top of this triangle theta. Uh, so that would be basically the angle, uh, a, a description of the inclination angle of this, uh, of this pipe. Okay, so uh, based on this geometry, then uh, just by trigonometry, the cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's minus gx over g. And there's a minus because remember we draw our coordinate system with, z uh, with x. Uh, pointing left to right and z pointing upwards. Uh, so this component uh, is in the negative x direction. So if we solve for gx, we get that gx is equal to minus g cosine theta. So now we can substitute that in uh, into this uh, for the x component of the, of the gravitational acceleration. We get that df gravity uh, is equal to minus rho g cosine theta ax dx. Okay, so we that's fine, uh, but uh, we could make this a little more useful. Uh, and ultimately, when we express, uh, remember, changes in potential energy, um, we typically associate those with changes in height. Uh, so ideally, we'd like to have that expressed uh, instead of using uh, variable x that is mapped to this coordinate system relative to the, the pipe axis. We'd like to have that in a coordinate system that maps where to a, a coordinate where z or some, some, uh, some variable is, represents the position in the vertical direction. And so basically uh, we can call that z prime. Uh, and I call it z prime because I already use z uh, to be orthogonal to the x component here. So this is shown here more clearly. So we have uh, the, you know, our angle theta as we drew here uh, that represents the inclination of the pipe. And so if I have a two, two points uh, along this, uh, along this line that's uh, in the x direction, say x1 and x2, then the vertical component of those positions I can express by uh, coordinates z prime 1 and z prime 2. Okay, so z prime, remember, is in the vertical direction, whereas z is orthogonal to the x-axis. So I want to express in terms of z prime because that, that would give me an expression in terms of the height. Uh, and that's something that would be more typical uh, for me to measure. So again, if I look at this right triangle, cosine theta, cosine theta is uh, delta z prime over the hypotenuse delta x, right? Because this is the opposite now, and this is the hypotenuse because the right angle is down here. Or I could say dz prime dx if this is a small enough difference between these two positions. So then I can solve for dx, and I get that dx is dz prime over cosine theta. Okay, so now I can substitute that in. So if I substitute in for dx, 
uh, in our expression for the, the gravity force as shown here, then I get that the net gravitational force on this on our system is equal to minus rho g cosine theta ax times dx, which is dz prime over cosine theta. These cosine theta terms cancel, and then I get an expression for the gravitational component of the force rho g times the cross-sectional area times dz prime. So this maps, again, the, the gravitational force to a, a vertical uh, distance rather than one that's with respect to this coordinate system uh, relative to the pipe. Okay, uh, so we took care of uh, the pressure force, we took care of the gravity force, and now we're going to look at a third force that could be uh, acting here on the system, and that force is due to wall drag. Um, and so let me just uh, redraw the, 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 our system and this section of pipe here. Okay, so wall drag, uh, again, this is gonna connect to the, the viscous resistance. So this, this is kind of getting at the term that, that we really need here uh, to apply uh, Bernoulli's equation. Okay, so uh, the force, the net force due to wall drag is equal to minus the wall shear stress times dA. And the area of interest here is now the surface area rather than uh, the cross-sectional area because it's a drag force. So the drag force is acting on the inner surface of the pipe. Okay, so again, tau sub wall represents the wall drag or the wall shear stress. And then this dA represents the contact area. So we can get an expression uh, for this uh, contact area uh, if we kind of take a look at this disk more closely. Uh, so here, remember this uh, this hatched area represents the the contact uh, area that where this disk of fluid is in contact with the pipe wall, and so if I cut this and stretch it out, uh, this contact area was basically a rectangle with a width dx and a length equal to the perimeter pi times the diameter. Uh, so I can express, instead of pi times the diameter, I can express this in terms of this, uh, this variable w sub p. So wp means the wetted perimeter. So again, that means the perimeter associated with the contact uh, area of the fluid uh, with respect to the pipe wall. So then uh, dA is just length times width, so pi d times dx, or the wetted perimeter times dx. So I can substitute this expression for the area uh, into the expression for this uh, drag force. And so I get that it's equal to minus the shear stress at the wall uh, times the perimeter times dx. Okay, notice that we have a negative sign here. Why is that? Well, as the fluid flows through this pipe, it's exerting a drag force in the positive x direction on the pipe. But we're not interested in the force on the pipe. We're interested on the forces on the fluid. So the force exerted by the pipe on the fluid, that drag force is in the opposite direction of the force exerted by the fluid on the pipe. So that's why we have a negative sign here uh, in, this, uh, in this wall drag force. Okay, a uh, fourth force that we can consider is external, um, external work or shaft work that's, uh, that's incorporated uh, here. And so that's, uh, that's not really shown uh, in, this, in this diagram, but we can imagine that the, uh, the change in work due to some displacement, uh, some external force acting over some distance, dx. Um, uh, remember, work is just equal to force times distance. So if we solve for this force, uh, then that would be equal to uh, minus delta w over dx. And remember uh, the sign convention that we have for, for work is that work is positive if it's done by the system on the surroundings. Uh, and it's negative, has a negative sign if it's done by the surroundings on the system. 